So a manual install, whether we do it, whether we electronically control it and, and you know we're in le electronically in front of it or we get our customers to help it, it's still a manual install and it's still the easiest, most reliable, simple way to do that. But what do we do if we have a larger customer? What if we've got 30, 50, 100 workstations, servers, laptops that we need to deploy this to and we really don't want to walk around and touch them all? Maybe you're doing a pre-sales audit and you really you know, want to invest as little time as possible right now in collecting the data. So do we have any opportunity to uh, deploy this agent without touching the box? And the answer is yes. And it all begins with what's called LAN Watch. Okay? Now, LAN Watch in and of itself is a very simple ping test. Um, have you ever used, like, Angry IP Analyzer? Um, not personally, but uh, I've yeah, heard of a lot of a lot of people have used that. It's a, it's a, it, I, I like it because I can remember the name Angry IP. It just sounds so cool. Um, but all <laughs> it is is a little utility that you can run on your network, and what it does is it it basically takes a subnet from one to two fifty four, and it just pings it, ping 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 two hundred and fifty five times there, and it just sees who's alive. They answer back, right, or they don't answer back. And yeah. what Kaseya does is it grabs all those live IP addresses. It does a reverse ARP lookup to get the MAC address. Then it does a DNS or NetBIOS resolution to get the name. And you get presented with an, you actually get sent an email because you're going to enable alerts on it. And you get sent an email that includes a list of all the machines found on that domain. It's going to look like this view LAN. When I click on view LAN here, it's basically going to look something like this. All right. It's going to list all of the machines that have been found. So you can see, I mean, you know, some of them have names, some of them don't. Hey, that's the Sonic Wall. Yeah. Um, I, this is, I don't know what this, this is probably a Dell Switch or something like that would be my gut feeling. Got a couple of VMware machines that aren't identified. Uh, you know, an iOmega. This is an iSCSI drive. So there's a lot of stuff on there that aren't real machines. But what we're going to do, so this is great. You've got, an, you know, you, all of a sudden you've got kind of a layout, an idea of what's out there on the network, and you can use that. But the idea with LandWatch is, here's my best practices for LandWatch. Run this every single day. Run it every day. Preferably on a domain controller. And preferably in the middle of the day, not in the middle of the night. You want to run this when everybody is at work and using the system. And the reason that you're going to run it every day and you're going to enable alerts is you got that list, that view land list. And that's great. Tomorrow, when it runs tomorrow at noon, nothing. Thursday, Friday, nothing. Monday, Mary Sue comes back from vacation, turns her machine on that's been off this whole time, which, of course, is not going to respond to the ping. Boom, you get an email. Hey, a new device is found on the LAN. And then you look at it and you call them up and say, hey, what, what is this new machine? Oh, yeah, we forgot. Mary's back in the corner. She was on vacation. Great. Now let's, let's get the agent loaded on there. You know, or, some, <laughs> or somebody buys a printer or brings a laptop home. Kids have been running BitTorrent, God knows what, on that laptop. And they brought it into the office now and, you, and, and have, have set it up on the network. And, you know, you want to know about it so you can make sure it's protected. Maybe some uh, intern brings an access point, puts it in the conference room so he can run his eye touch while he's working. Didn't tell anybody. Of course, wide open wireless network. So, you know, th this is all stuff that allows you to keep an eye on the, on the customer. So long term, LandWatch is very useful as a day to day um, kind of audit of the network. But to deploy the agent, what we do is we run LandWatch and then we click on the install agents and we select the machine that we ran it on. And then what it's going to do is it's going to bring up uh, the ability to push the installation out. And the way that you do that is you select, I'm, I'm just going to pretend these are all computers, everything that's in red. Um, is is does not have the agent. It has not detected the agent on there. So you go through and you select all of the machines. Now please be aware that Kaseya it's not smart enough to know what a printer is, what a you know a NAS device is, um, what a well, what it normally switches and firewalls don't come up because they, the the host names don't get resolved. It has to only list the host name. But you know just be smart about it. Um, you know don't. I mean, it's not that you can hurt. You can't hurt it. You can push this out to a pr uh, printer. It's just not going to work. Um, but the idea is, look, pick and choose your workstations from the list. You probably have already installed it on the server. Go up here, 
put in the credentials. So if we're an ABC company, the domain is ABC, the administrator, the secret password, and then pick your what, which installation package you want to use. Probably the workstation install package. There's not that much difference between a workstation and a laptop, so just go ahead and default to the workstation for now. Um, you can always change it later on. And then you're going to click install. Now, let me tell you how this is going to work, okay, because I don't want you to be frustrated because it doesn't always work. And, it, and it's not Kaseya's fault, it's just the world we live in. What this does is Kaseya goes out to this iSCSI computer, and it looks for the admin dollar sign share, the hidden admin share, okay? That admin share is, is available anytime file and print services have been enabled. Now, if file and print services have been disabled, game over. Don't fix it. You're not going to go run to that machine, turn file and print services back on, and then come back and try it again, right? Yeah. <laughs> because you should have just installed the agent while you were there. It's faster to install the agent than it is to, to put file and print services on, and that's all we're trying to accomplish. We don't need file and print services to run Kaseya. We just need it to push the agent out. So if file and print service is disabled, game over. If the firewall is blocking file and print services, let's say it's a third-party firewall that didn't automatically open up that point, that port, game over. Let it go. Maybe on rare, rare circumstances, if I had 75 machines here and I knew it was the firewall that was blocking it, and I could go to the console of the antivirus firewall product and put it, uh, you know, open up the port, then come back and try it, maybe I would spend the time to do that. But because it's so easy to install, you really have to look at this and start multiplying the checkboxes by like one minute. You know, that's one minute, two minutes, three minutes worth of work that I'm saving. So I'm not going to spend 30, 40, an hour troubleshooting it when I could have just spent three minutes installing it manually, either or even getting the customer to do it. You know, I, I could have sure. remote controlled it and, and gotten it done by the time you figure this out. So please sure. don't get frustrated with this. It either works or it doesn't work. So we open up file and print services, we log into the admin dollar sign share, we create a subdirectory on the C drive, we transfer some files from the XP Pro, and we use a little utility um, in, in, in um, it's called KConnect is, is generally what it is. Uh, currently it's probably PS Exec, but soon in, in version 6.01 or 6.1 it'll be KConnect, and that's what does the remote install. It could be the antivirus doesn't like that package for whatever reason. Again, move on. I got a plan C for you, okay? Um, now, I, I, I don't have a domain controller here to kind of show you, but you can actually deploy this using Active Directory. If you run this audit, you run Landwatch on a domain controller, we're going to go through and scavenge Active Directory and pull up all of your computers and all of your users. They're all going to be listed here. Now, you do need to pick the correct group, by the way, so you need to pick the ABC group or the headquarter group if, if the machine are unassigned. If it's in that group, it won't show it otherwise. Um, but the idea is that we can push the agent out using Active Directory. We can create a policy that will have it, it, have it install. Right? It's actually pretty oh, easy to useful. do. So if it's a computer and I do it, it, here's the downside. Here's why I don't recommend it as my first choice, because it actually is really easy to do. Um, my, the reason it's not plan A or even plan B, plan A being a manual install, plan B being install agents after Landwatch, this is plan C, is that when you assign it to a computer, that computer's got to be rebooted in order for it to install. If I assign it to a group of users, that, that user has to log off and log back in in order for it to install. So you're going to have to wait. And that's one trait that most techs don't have in abundance. We're not terribly patient about waiting for things. Like, you know, we need to move on to the next fire. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, most people don't want to come back like tomorrow or, you know, which is probably what you're talking about and trying to see if I've, if I've accounted for all the machines. But you know what? If it's, the, if it's a big network and, and, you know, it's a factory floor, it's got 35 machines spread out all over. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go touch them all. I'm going to go ahead and be more patient. So this is, po this is this your though, third choice. Is that it would, you could automate it, right? So that any new machines that are added to a network automatically get the agent. Well, you... no, because all this does is basically um, you have to assign it to a specific machine. So um, it's not going to, um, it's not going to automatically okay. install it. I mean, the only, I've never tried this. Uh, you, you, you just kind of trigger something in my head. In a, like a small business server, you have the templates 
um, in Small Business Server, if you assigned it to a template, because that template gets copied and becomes like another machine, maybe it would copy those settings, but I, I, I've never tried it. Normally, and honestly, I'm not sure you want it okay. to automatically install this, because if somebody brings their laptop from home and plugs it in, let's say a vendor comes in and plugs their laptop into the wireless, and they're letting them have access, they trust the guy, you don't want your management software to be installed on that guy's laptop all of a sudden, right? He, you're, they're not paying for that. <laughs> so I think you need to have yeah. a little bit of human involvement in this. I think you get the alert that, that, it, that it's in fact on there, you call the customer, and then you, you, you decide if this is cool or not cool to have on your network. Are you going to install the agent? Or are you not going to install the agent? And that's why when... When we talk about the land watch, I like to get notified about things that I've seen in the last 30 days. Kaseya defaults to seven. I think that's a little aggressive. So I'm I'm like, hey, if I've seen it in 30 days, I'm okay with it. You know, I don't need to know every week that you know a guy doesn't bring it in. He brings his laptop in every couple of weeks. I don't need to know every time he brings it in. Just well, at least once a month, so I can go and make sure his antivirus is up to date and you know his patching is up to date. Feel good about the machine. Okay. Okay. All right, so look, everything, you know, everything that, that you and I have talked about up to this, this point, you know, we talked about creating these machine groups, we talked about deploying the agents and land watch and, and all, I mean, all this stuff that we've discussed up to this point, you're only going to do when you get a new client. You're not going to go creating machine groups at whim, you know, on a whim or, or deploying agents on a whim. You're only going to do that when you get new clients. And, you know, we'd love to say that those new clients fly through the door every day, but, you know, we know that's not the case. Right? If it is, you're doing something really Well, you know, with my mean. masterful sales skills. Yeah, exactly. Obviously. You need to share that with everybody else, and, and so we can all do that. <laughs> but right now, that's not what happens. And I guarantee you, if you have, like, a new machine at a client site, you're going to manually install it. Like, you take that machine out of the box that's the first thing you're going to do is put the agent on there because once the agent is on the machine, you can walk away from that machine. I mean, we've had clients sure. that, that we can de we can drop ship them a Dell box. We send them to get client. They'll download the agent. We'll tell them to click the workstation agent. They'll install it, and we'll take it over from there. We'll join the domain. We'll transfer their files. We'll set their you know everything up. And I mean, as long as they're comfortable taking it out of a box and plugging it in and physically moving it around, we don't even have to go out on site. Saves them time. Saves money. And everybody's happy. We can completely configure and transfer files remotely. So um, definitely put the agent on as soon as you take it out of the box.